Everybody, it's Scott from the old Curiosity Shop and I am back with another thrift haul. Just look at all that stuff. Let's dive right in. You see a lot of pink glass. I know, I know. I said that I wasn't going to be buying all this pink depression glass anymore because a lot of the prices have tanked and I don't always feel like shipping glass. I saw all this orphaned glass. I knew what it was. Had to pick it up. Paid 15 bucks for all of it. The pattern is called Open Lace, and I know at least one person who's watching this video is screaming because he collected this stuff about 30 years ago, and I imagine he's, well, I don't know if he's still collecting it or not. It's made by Old Colony, and it was made in the 1930s. It's a strange pattern because it's hefty glass, it's thick glass, it's not delicate glass at all, and it doesn't have an etched pattern. Most depression glass is a lot thinner than this, a lot more delicate. Well, not most of it, but a good deal of it. It often uh, has etched patterns as well. So we can see where the open lace part comes from. Um, and anyway, there is still a slight following uh, uh, in popularity of this glass. It does sell. Here's a divided uh, serving tray or what could be called a relish. There's another divided serving tray. Lots of serving pieces here. That is a big serving bowl, a nice uh, vegetable bowl. There are two uh, big dinner plates. Here's a small either salad, dessert, bread, or luncheon plate. Small berry bowl and one saucer. This thing back here is pretty versatile, but it actually came with a clear flower frog in the top and would be used as a vase. Take the flower frog out and you could use that as a candy dish, as a mayonnaise, or whatever you want. It's got three feet on it. As I said, I paid, what did I pay? 10, 12, 15 bucks? I think I paid about 15 bucks for all of it. I know I didn't pay more than that. And it's probably when I part all this stuff out, uh, there might be $50 worth of glass here on the table. I'm not certain about that. Um, I think the serving pieces here are going to sell for about $10 each, maybe $12, and we'll go from there. Alright, uh, over here we have pup, uh, our dog and pup on chain. Uh, I usually see these with two pups. There could have been a second, but there might have just been this one. It is marked uh, Japan, I think. somewhere maybe maybe not but that's what it is 1950s for, uh, 60s and uh, they're cute so if you look real close the paint is good and I don't really see where another chain broke off but there there's could have been a second pup everybody well maybe not everybody but almost everybody knows the snowflake uh, Pyrex stuff here uh, 
I've sold this this before. It doesn't sell for a great deal, believe it or not, even though it's in this really cool turquoise um, color. There's the small casserole with the divided the divided casserole with a divided lid. I paid three dollars for this. The whole thing. Uh, it'll probably sell for twelve or fifteen. Back there is the larger casserole with no lid. And that might sell for about ten or twelve bucks. Um, so that's okay. Ah, we'll let you hear this. The Westminster chimes uh, on this uh, clock, Telecron clock, which I picked up for $10, had to put a new cord on it. I cleaned it up, oiled it up, and it is in perfect working shape. And it does have the nice West, West, Westminster, not minister. Uh, I hate when people say that. I shouldn't say hate. Westminster chimes. And that's the sound it makes on the hour and uh, every 15 minutes. You can tell by the cathedral top on it that it dates somewhere between 1930 and 1935. The cathedral top was popular in clocks and radios for about five years, 1930 into the mid 30s, and then that was about it. Uh, Forty bucks, maybe I'll get for that clock. We'll see what happens. It is a uh, Revere. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see what we can do. Okay, Revere. Westminster chimes. Telecron motor, made in the USA. Revere clocks are good clocks. This one is a. Pr this one has a pretty, uh, not so fancy case on it, but it is in great shape. Ceramic Ghost. I've never seen this one before. Again, I said I was going to stop buying them, but I've sold every one I have, and it's Halloween, so this should sell. Homemade ceramics, 1960s, 70s, 80s. Should be able to get about to get about 20 bucks for him because I have never seen him. Hard plastic Santa. That means 1950s, not the blow molds of the 60s and onward. He's all lit up with a pink face. No cracks on him and he'll sell for probably 20 bucks. That you've already seen, but I wanted to show it to you all rewired with my vintage lampshade on it. That's the Lusterware, uh, the orange colored Lusterware small uh, boudoir lamp with a vintage parchment shade on it. Just wanted you to see that all working. For $4, I have a kissing Santa and Mrs. Claus on their park bench. They are Japan and they have their little corks on their heinies. So they're all ready to go for your Christmas dinner. Everyone, I want to show you something. Um, I'm on North 7th Street in Philadelphia. This is not a post office that I go to on a regular basis. I do come when I'm in this neck of the woods. Anyway, what I want to show you on the inside, this is one of the post offices that still has an original WPA era painting. Of course, WPA was the Works Progress Administration, one of Roosevelt's uh, alphabet soup programs to help get us out of the Depression. And he hired a lot of itinerant artists to go around the country and paint murals, and they did a lot of their paintings in municipal buildings. Anyway, inside of this one is an original painting from the 1930s. It's very dark, it needs to be cleaned, but it's just amazing that it's still in its original location 
and I'm going to do a little bit of filming inside and let you see it. So let's go in. Uh, I know this is new. I paid 50 cents for it. It probably was sold last week at Target. I don't care. I love it because it has a real vintage look. Metal. Candle holder. I wish there were two, but there were not two. There were only one. So uh, I'm going to sell it anyway. I also know that this is not old. It dates to 1993. It sells for about $15 online. I have seen this sell. It's a tin container that either popcorn or chocolate-covered pretzels or something came in. You know when schools do all that fundraising stuff and they come around with a pamphlet and you have to buy something from your neighbor's kids? That's what this tin is from. Uh, I like it because the graphics are somewhat retro. They remind me of the old Disney Halloween record albums we used to listen to back in the 70s. The graphic does. And this tin is in really, pale is in really good shape. I paid a dollar for it and I should be able to sell it for about 15. And this was a big disappointment. I saw these two plates, I recognized it as the crocus pattern made by the Hall Company as soon as I saw the plates because I've sold this pattern before and I knew that certain size plates were worth a lot and everything else was worth nothing. The 9 inch plates are worth a couple of bucks each. The 10 inch plates are, are sell for about 60. Guess what size these plates are? Yep, they're the 9 inch. They're worth about 5 bucks. Maybe 4. Maybe 3. <laughs> so, I was mad but it was only they were two dollars but it was half off so I paid it so I paid a dollar for both plates and I'll still be able to uh, hopefully get if I'm lucky I'll get ten bucks the plates are great there's no crazing there's no chips the silver is good there's the mark on the back hall quality superior hall quality China and uh, it's a it was a popular pattern in the 30s so, you know, the other thing is, most of this is worth very little, but then there's like one vase that's worth 300 So, depression glass and American-made dinnerware of the 30s, most pieces, a couple of dollars each, but there's, there's those rare items in every pattern, and if you know what they are, you can uh, really sweep up. Anyway, you know what that is? What does it look like? Some weird medical testing apparatus. It's actually a radio. It was built probably in 1921 or 22. You probably know that the early radio sets were made in kits. You didn't walk into a store and buy a beautiful pre-made radio until a few years later, 1924-25. So all the early radios were handmade in kits. The father would usually go down to the radio supply store as soon as one opened in town or order the parts, go out into the garage and build a set. These are called homebrew radio sets and there are a lot of collectors that love these things because they are all one of a kind. This has lost its hinges so I'll just pull this lid off and just let you take a look on the inside. This is a one tube set. Not a crystal set. There's the variable capacitor right here. I know you can't, I wish I had, well, let me do this. Now you can see. See all the parts are brand, are actually branded. They, there's a sticker on that part. Uh, the tube is probably marked, uh, 
it looks like a Radiotron RCA. This is the uh, capacitor here, variable capacitor right there. Everything is working good on it. And if you hooked all this up to the batteries that it would take to run it, you would be able to pick up stations on it even today. Uh, but it is a battery set and you need uh, all the batteries to do it. All right, is that it? That is it. This is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying, like, comment, and subscribe. I got it right this time. And thanks for watching. So long for now.